everyone welcome to this update video i trust and hope you're doing great this afternoon and we're going to be looking at what is going on across the tropics so there's quite a bit of activity right now within parts of the atlantic basin we've got a couple of tropical waves out there and uh, we can see that pretty robust one that is headed towards the west and as time goes by as we head deeper into the hurricane season and as there's a lot more moisture out there we're gonna see more and more robust tropical waves and eventually we'll see development matter of fact models are hinting at that for the latter part of june and early july so we're gonna look at that later in this video but for right now let us switch focus to the vicinity of the gulf of mexico and also just offshore Florida. So we can see that cluster of some activity that is associated with Invest 92L. So that disturbance, it uh, did not manage to develop as per the National Hurricane Center. And it remains an Invest, which is an area, you know, being watched. But the chance is pretty much non-existent right now to see any additional development of the system. But we can see that in the Gulf, there's some activity moving into northeast Mexico in the uh, southernmost part of Texas. That is in association with Invest 93L, and that is the disturbance in the Gulf, which has been losing its uh, opportunity to develop into something. So as of the latest update from the National Hurricane Center this afternoon, here we can see that X to show the location of that area of low pressure. Now, this is going to be moving in by tomorrow evening, and it has a 40% chance to get itself together. So it could become a tropical depression. However, it has very limited time and it is quite disorganized right now. But regardless, it remains a rainfall threat. So we had Alberto a couple of days ago and now here we have this Invest 93L. So it looks as though it may not actually become barrel, which is the next name on the list to be used for the hurricane season. But regardless, as I said, there is going to be that rainfall threat. The heavy rain could lead to periods of flooding across parts of northeastern Mexico. And then let us drift to the Caribbean on the infrared weather satellite. We can see this blob uh, in the southwest Caribbean just within the vicinity of Panama. And we can see some additional showers and thunderstorms popping up across parts of Nicaragua, Honduras, even a few spots in Belize and the Yucatan of Mexico as well. Near the Cayman Islands, there is some activity. There could be some passing showers. We can see that there's certainly some afternoon action kicking in for Cuba and Jamaica. And even though we're seeing that, you know, for now, most of the action is confined to the southern parishes. Later, as the day goes on, and even by the time this video is posted, we could see a bit more action in the north. So you can let me know what's been happening for you if you're getting that rainfall relief as many persons, many areas so desperately need. Then headed to Hispaniola, it is a similar story. Puerto Rico, a couple thunderstorms as well. Meanwhile, it remains a bit on the dry side for parts of the Virgin Islands. Definitely there for the ABC Islands and much of the Leeward Islands. But as we head further south to the Windward Islands, we can definitely see some convection. And that is in association with one of the tropical waves moving into the Caribbean. And the other is uh, just within the vicinity of uh, the Guyanas. And we can see some activity there as well. Some blobs popping up here and there this afternoon across parts of northern South America. And in addition, there's also some dust in the area, some Saharan dust, which has made its way in. And that is not something unusual for the time of year. But as it relates to the rainfall activity throughout the rest of today, here we can see the map from Euro. And the more colorful the map is, the higher the rainfall amount. For example, just within the vicinity of the Yucatan and offshore Cuba, we can see those burgundy and that purple shade and popping up that's going up to two, two and a half inches of rain. And then most of those red shadings indicate just around an inch of rain additionally throughout now, uh, through now and to tomorrow morning. And then for other parts of Central America, headed to South America, up to an inch of rain additionally for the most part a couple showers will move by the lesser antilles much not expected for the abc islands and then we already saw that you know there was some thunderstorm activity in puerto rico hispaniola jamaica cuba so that general area is going to remain a bit active through today not guaranteed for everywhere within the islands though now, as I was mentioning earlier, models are already hinting at those tropical waves that are moving to the west. You know, eventually we could see one of them try to get itself together 
and could be a little problem for the Caribbean. It's not a guarantee. I want to put that out immediately before I even delve into the details. It's not a guarantee, and certainly that is not something uncommon for the month of uh, well, for late June headed into July. We really want to start to look into the main development region as we head into late July, August, September, October. That's usually where we want to watch for those tropical waves. Moving west and developing because that is when we start to have the more conducive environment for them to actually, uh, you know, take the opportunity to get themselves together. And one of those factors which will be a huge boost this year is the sea surface temperatures. We're looking at this graphic here, and uh, where we see those blue shadings indicate below normal sea surface temperatures, and then the orange going to those red shadings indicate above average sea surface temperature so essentially the warmer colors indicate that uh, the specific area is warmer than average and the more vibrant we see the shade in the warmer the temperature is than what it typically should be and we can definitely see that for the vicinity of the caribbean we can see those uh shadings of yellows oranges and reds popping up around and even for parts of the main development region as well so temperatures are well on their way as we switch to the actual temperature map we can see 27 28 29 degrees celsius around so this is going to be helping to fuel development the main development region parts of the caribbean are warmer than normal and that is just the fuel to the fire because it is the warm surface waters that are the uh, is the main energy needed to get these systems going, although there are other environmental factors which actually dictate whether we see development or not, such as whether those upper level winds are favorable or not. So if there are stronger upper level winds as those thunderstorms grow, they become displaced and it prevents tropical systems from intensifying and organizing well. And there's also the presence of dry air, which has been the main inhibitant factor, well, one of the main inhibitant factors in the main development region. So all of that dry air induced by that dust coming from North Africa has helped to stabilize the environment in parts of the main development region. And it usually peaks in July. So we're going to see these uh, denser dust plumes continually, uh, continually coming off and making their way to the west and blanketing parts of the Caribbean and Americas, which is happening now, by the way, some areas are quite dusty. So that is one of the inhibitant factors. But I mean, provided that La Nina is going to be developing and there are above average sea surface temperatures, we could see significant activity as the hurricane season goes along. But for the next 10 days, this is what the Euro model is showing. We can see these L's, all these different strokes you're seeing indicate the ensemble members and essentially the more of them we see there's greater agreement that we may see an air flow pressure form and affect the caribbean so it doesn't mean that uh it's multiple storms expected but rather the different members picking up on something within this area so this is as we head out to the 2nd of july tuesday the 2nd of july so we're going to be watching those tropical waves coming off of africa and let's see if they're going to try to take advantage of any favorable conditions to allow development. And the GFS is in agreement with this. So as time goes by, we're going to see if the models remain consistent and if there is some greater agreement about us having development coming in from the West. And overall, the Caribbean should be on watch this hurricane season because uh, La Nina developing also means a stronger area of high pressure. And when this area of high pressure is stronger, we get more systems headed into the region. It doesn't mean every storm that develops out there is going to come in, but there is a greater chance. In La Nina years, we typically find that the Western Atlantic, which includes the Caribbean, the Gulf, the vicinity of the Bahamas, is quite active. But for right now, uh, it doesn't look as though we are going to see development uh, of you know a tropical storm or even a hurricane for the near future. But I'm here to keep you posted as always. And that is what I wanted to share with you in this update video. And so I really do hope you found it to be very informative. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'll respond when I can. And remember to always be weatherwise.